Hello again. We're still here at Richmond Beach and Shoreline. We're going to spend some time here talking about arguments from analogy or analogical reasoning. Which is uh, part of the broad category of inductive, inductive reasoning. Yeah. Powerful stuff. You argue from analogy every single day. Every time you buy your favorite candy bar, you argue from analogy. Every time you date your favorite boyfriend or girlfriend, you're arguing from analogy. Uh, every time you go to your favorite restaurant, you argue from, argue from analogy. Every time you take a class from your favorite teacher, you're arguing from analogy. And we, argue, we do this well, but what we want to do is you know, fine tune our reasoning here a bit. So what I'm going to do here with Paul is I'm going to offer an argument from analogy, and then I'm going to start changing it, and he's going to let me know if the changes are making the argument stronger or weaker, because an inductive argument will be stronger or weaker, and perhaps why they're stronger or weaker. Okay. Does that work for you? Okay, so you're going to suggest additions or changes, yeah. and then I will add, give you, okay. okay. Here's my basic argument. I'm right. hungry right now, and uh, I have gone to um, the Tex-Mex restaurant, it's a Tex-Mex restaurant, three times this month, and I like the food. And I'm thinking I'll go there tonight for dinner, and I'll, I conclude I'll probably like the food tonight. So I've gone there three times, this uh -huh. Tex-Mex restaurant. I'm going to go to a restaurant tonight, an undisclosed restaurant. And because I've really enjoyed eating out at the Tex-Mex restaurant in the past, I conclude I'll probably like eating at this restaurant tonight. Now, can I clarify, is the restaurant tonight the same one? No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm leaving that un unsaid. Oh. Is it a Tex-Mex restaurant? It's, a, it's simply a restaurant. Oh, really? Okay. So, would you say this is a good argument or a bad argument at this point? Sounds, this is, sounds pretty weak. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, but is the three times the same Tex-Mex? Same restaurant, same... And, you, and you've always had good I always food. liked it. Okay, okay, so tonight you're going to a restaurant and you're not saying which one it is. Sounds pretty weak. Okay. How about if I tell you it's going to be the same Tex-Mex restaurant? Okay, so now you've changed the argument. Instead of just saying you're going to a restaurant, you're going to that Tex-Mex restaurant. Right. Seems to me this makes the argument stronger. Okay. How about if I say, instead of going three times, I went five times in the last month, and I like the food every single time. Therefore, I will probably like the food at this Tex-Mex restaurant tonight. Sounds stronger yet. Stronger, okay. When you add that. Mm -hmm. How about if I say, I've gone there five times. One time I had tacos, one time I had burritos, one time I had mole, one time I had fajitas, and one time I had uh, this really good tortilla soup. And I liked it every single time, therefore I'm going to like the food tonight wow. at the Tex-Mex restaurant. You know your Mexican food. I would conclude you know your Mexican food. <laughs> so, so I no, you... that sounds, it makes it a stronger argument because you've cited a more varied background for your conclusion. And mm -hmm. uh, if you liked it on each of those different dishes, it's more likely you'll like it tonight than if you only ate the same dish each time. Right. So. So if you had gone four times and, and always had the uh, burrito supreme and never anything else, right. then you're going tonight, it's not as strong an argument. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and that's I'll, a good, that's a stronger argument. I'll change it again. Everything's the same. Yeah. I've gone there five times, five different dishes each time. Yeah. I'm going to the same restaurant tonight. I conclude, therefore, tonight's meal will be the best meal I've ever had in my entire life. That we, that's good. That weakens the argument. Why? Well, your conclusion now is much more definite, much more precise. And so there are more circumstances, in possible circumstances, in which your conclusion would be false. Okay. How about if I change the conclusion from it'll be the best meal of all time to at least won't make me sick tonight? So now what you've done is you've weakened your conclusion. Instead of making it more precise and therefore stronger, uh, narrowed it down to the best in the you'll ever have ever eaten. You've made it weaker in the sense of more general. If, if I've liked it the last five times, almost guaranteed it's not going to just make me sick tonight. Yeah. It, is it guaranteed? It's stronger. It's Are a the, stronger argument. Will the conclusion ever be guaranteed that I'm going to like this food tonight? If I, let's say I've gone a thousand times this past ten years, mm -hmm. a thousand times, and I like the food every single time. Will that guarantee I'm going to like that food tonight? It can't. Ev it can never guarantee it because it's, remember, these, this is an inductive argument, and in an inductive argument, the premises never guarantee the conclusion. They never show conclusively that the conclusion must be true. We might have a new cook. Or maybe I'll have a new recipe I won't particularly like, or maybe my stomach's going to be not doing too well today, and that's why tonight I'm not going to like it. All kinds of variables that mean that the conclusions will never be certain given the premises. But keep in mind, though, and this, this is good, even though we're never going to be able to absolutely guarantee the conclusion, you actually bet your life on arguments from analogy every single day. I ask my students how many of you guys came to school in a car, and almost everybody raises their hand, and I say, you guys are planning on driving home today? And they go, yeah. And I said, you realize you could be 
hit on the freeway by a drunk driver or a meteorite and could be killed. I mean, it's possible, yet you're going to go. Why do you get in the car and feel confident? It's because you've driven that car to school hundreds of times and gotten home perfectly safe. You conclude by analogy that you'll be perfectly safe today. So, I mean, in a sense, you're kind of betting your is life on argument. this trip like the other trips? It's exactly the same. It's an are, analogical reason. Yeah, it's, it's very yeah. similar. Not guaranteed you'll make it home alive, but you're, in a sense, betting your life on an argument from analogy. So we use these all the time, and they can be incredibly powerful arguments, but they'll never absolutely guarantee the conclusion. Never. Uh, because they're inductive, and that's the nature of induction. Um, medical science uses analogical mm -hmm. reasoning all the time. We have a drug that supposedly cures a certain uh, heart disease, that, a, a drug that is designed to cure a certain heart disease in humans, so they'll test it on monkeys. And if the drug cures the heart disease in monkeys, the reasoning will be like this. Monkeys' hearts are similar to human hearts. The drug cured the disease in the monkeys. The drug will probably cure the same disease in humans because our hearts are similar. Mm -hmm. the, the effects will probably be similar too. That's analogical reasoning. It is. Not that we're endorsing animal testing. We're just using it as an example. It, it, it's, it's interesting because we might argue, or I can imagine someone concerned about animal testing arguing from analogy. That person might say, uh, to the degree it makes sense to say that I and the rat or the chimpanzee are relevantly similar, so that the test on the chimpanzee tells me something about humans. If we wouldn't do certain kinds of things to humans, since the chimpanzee is supposed to be relevantly similar to us, we should be doing it to the chimpanzee also. Uh, I'm not saying it's a great argument, mm -hmm. but you can see how from like both sides' positions, they both might use arguments from analogy, and we really need to take a look at uh, all the different principles and facets of arguments from analogy to kind of find out where they're strong and where they're weak. Mm -hmm. well, that argument might be arguing that there's, an there's a moral analogy between mm -hmm. rats and humans, or monkeys and humans. And, and legal the, the theorists and moralists. Should be similar. Yeah, legal theorists and moralists oftentimes need to use arguments from analogy. Mm -hmm. uh, judges, once they get past the opportunity to appeal to case law, will oftentimes say, well, this situation I see before me in the case today is very similar to these cases over here. It's pretty clear that these cases uh, had this particular result. Therefore, this situation, which is relevantly similar, should have the same kind of result. Mm -hmm. These guys were guilty, therefore I should find these guys guilty. Mm -hmm. That's the rule of precedent. Rule of precedent, yeah. Yeah, and, and in fact, many animal rights advocates, and Peter Singer, the famous mm -hmm. uh, philosopher who's an animal rights, an advocate of animal rights, they argue analogically that what counts for morality is the ability to suffer. Mm -hmm. And they, will, they would argue that monkeys can suffer just like humans can suffer. And since that's what's crucial to taking a moral stance towards a creature, since they can suffer and we suffer, we're morally very similar. And therefore, since certain things are wrong to do to a human, mm -hmm. they're wrong to do to a monkey, because we're all morally similar. That's that right. kind of reasoning that you find in arguments for animal rights is analogical mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. One of the things that this discussion illustrates is something interesting, and that is that with an with a deductive argument, if a deductive argument is valid, no matter what you add to the premises, the argument will remain valid. And that is to say, deductive arguments are monotonic. If an argument's valid, no matter what premises you add on top of the existing premises, it'll remain valid, even if you add contradictory premises. Mm -hmm. With an inductive argument, if an inductive argument is weak, there are premises you can add that can make it stronger. Mm -hmm. And if it's strong, there are premises you can add that make it weaker. So if the police have 15 items of information that link Joe Dokes to the crime, and so it's beginning to look 95% probable that Joe Dokes did it. Because mm -hmm. we've got all kinds of evidence. Now, what would one piece of evidence be that might suggest that Joe Dokes didn't do it? If we found out he was in a different country during the crime. We found out he was in Australia during the crime. When then... the crime was committed, all of a sudden the argument becomes weak. Yeah. By putting that one premise into the argument, it becomes weak. Uh, so, inductive arguments are not monotonic. There are premises we can add that would change them from strong to weak or weak to strong. And that's what this discussion kind of illustrates. So should we wrap it up? Let's do it. I'm thinking okay. of gin and tonics. <laughs> so we hope that this helps you get into analogical reasoning. Isn't that the point? Yes.